Let's, uh, Professor Cruz, let's thank to Professor Cruz again. Thank you again. Thank you, Wanda. So, Next talk uh, will, give, will be given by Dr. Morio Toyoshima from um, National Institute of Information and Communication Technology. Uh, Dr. Toshim, please proceed your next, uh, next stage, okay? So I will give a brief introduction of uh, Dr. Toyoshima. He received a PhD in electro electronic engineering from the Tokyo Univers uh, University of Tokyo in 2003. He joined the Communications Research Laboratory in 1994 and was engaged in research for the engineering test satellite 6, ETS 6, optical communication experiment. Then he joined uh, Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, uh, formerly NASA, to assist in the development of the optical inter orbit communications engineering test satellite OISET. OISET. From uh, 19, uh, 1999 to 2003. After spending one year uh, at Vienna University of Technology, he returned to NRCT and performed grant to OSET uh, laser communications experiments in uh, 2006. Afterwards, he was involved in the several projects such as small op optical transponder, SOTA. Uh, conducting the satellite to ground counterpoint communication experiments. He's now the director of general of the wireless networks research center in NICT. Uh, that the title of uh, today's talk is New Frontiers in uh, Space Laser Communications for Beyond 5G 6G. So Dr. Tushin, please start this talk. Thank you very much for your kind introduction for me. So I'm really honored to be here to present my talk today. So I would like to present my talk on new frontiers in space laser communications for beyond 5G, 6G. So today's last talk. So please uh, listen to my uh, talk with relaxed. So first, here is an online outline of my talk. So first, I introduce some activities on space laser communications in Japan. Then, I will describe a little bit about uh, satellite quantum key distribution trend. Then I would like to mention about the trend for mega constellations. Then I will uh, show you a future vision on space laser communications toward beyond 5G and 6G. So here is the advantage of space-based laser com. So of course, a large communication capacity. So when we send, a, for example, 80 gigabytes data, so it is only 16 seconds by optical communication, but it takes about 13 minutes by RF communication. So uh, 50 times a larger area can be uh, trans, uh, transmitted. And also, uh, when we send the same data rate by RF and optical, so uh, antenna diameter for the optical communication system can be 20 times smaller than that for RF communication system. So it means, for example, optical communication antenna diameter can be around 10 centimeter. On the other hand, RF antenna uh, could be one or two meter. Uh, and also a uh, higher secure, uh, highly secure wireless communication can be possible. For example, from the uh, Leo position, uh, from the thousand kilometer away, so footprint on the ground by RF uh, will be uh, three or four kilometer. On the other hand, by laser, so the footprint is about 10 or 20 meter. So the audience in this room, uh, at the end of the room, so I can receive the signal, but uh, they cannot uh, receive the signal. So uh, spatially, it is really secure. So here shows uh, around this in the past uh, from, the na from now on space laser communications in NICT. So it has begun since 1980s 
at that time, uh, nobody knows how to send the laser to the satellite accurately. So some uh, uh, GMS is a kind of current Himawari series of the weather satellites. So in the past, uh, they, the researchers tried to confirm how to send the laser beam accurately to the geostationary satellites. And then uh, first laser communication was done between geostationary orbit and the ground uh, in 1994 by ETS-6. I will show data. Then uh, first inter-orbit by di directional communication between Leo satellite and Geo satellite were done by Japanese satellites. And also uh, micro satellite laser communication experiment was done. This was also first experiment all over the world. So I will a little bit explain a real experiment. This was a laser communication experiment. Uh, first uh, laser communication uh, all over the world. This can be a video. You can see uh, the spot is a twinkling. So due to the pointing error and the atmospheric turbulence. So here is the uh, uh, stars. So moving towards uh, right hand side a little bit. So because the uh, 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 rotation of the earth. So here is like a needle. This is a uplink from the ground station. Uh, for the optical uh, communication, telescope, so astronomer usually use. So a telescope is used for the antenna. Here is the optical system. And here is the ETS-6 satellites. At that time, one mega PPS was performed. After that, uh, NICT and uh, JAXA are collaborated. So we, uh, we did uh, some uh, first Leo to ground laser communication experiment like this. So 150 kilogram laser terminal was on board. So you can see uh, this video. So this is a, a bright spot from the Leo satellites. It is much brighter than the full moon. So you can see a little bit moving because the Leo satellite is moving. So the crowd is coming uh, like this. I can, yes. So uh, drawback of the free space laser communication uh, would be something about weather and crowds. So the loss is uh, becoming uh, higher. So sometimes we lose the signal uh, by using this uh, by crowds, but uh, we tra transmitted the higher beacon laser to come back the uh, downlink beam. So uh, this is uh, still keeping uh, tracking even under the uh, crowd condition. So this is almost a uh, uh, high uh, loss uh, due to the crowds. So this is a kind of eye pattern on the ground. Uh, you can see uh, there, there is something, uh, a turbulence effect uh, by uh, atmosphere, atmosphere. And also uh, NICT launched a, a small satellite with a, a private a cooperation of a private company called Socrates in 2016. You can see also the video this is a, a downlink from the micro satellites and uh, uh, two needle uh, shows showing the uplink laser beam. So this was also the first experiment by using a 50 kilogram uh, micro satellites. So laser terminal was just a five kilogram. We also uh, performed a basic quantum key distribution experiment so successfully, this image was uh, sent uh, from the satellite to ground by optical link. So here is the uh, uh, east coast of the Australia. 
So uh, to understand uh, easily, I prepared some uh, computer graphics. So this uh, satellite called Socrates was launched into low Earth orbit, uh, 500 kilometer altitude. So uh, by using an onboard CMOS camera, uh, this area can be uh, uh, taken by the camera. So when we see the satellites from the Tokyo station in NICT, we transmit it to the satellite, uh, higher power laser beam first. So once this receiver uh, tracks a beacon, beacon beam from the ground, so communication signal uh, immediately sent to the ground. So we implemented uh, LDGM code. Uh, this is kind of the uh, LDPC codes. So we used the uh, UDP packets like this, but uh, unfortunately, uh, some packets are missing due to uh, atmospheric turbulence. So you can see the night, you can see the star in the night. So star is twinkling. This is a fading in the optical communication. So due to this, we, we are missing some uh, pixels and packets. But using the decoder or the LDGM code, we can reproduce uh, missing, uh, missing bits by using uh, extra bits. So we can reproduce uh, correctly this kind of image. And also we performed some uh, first uh, QKD uh, experiment. So we implemented a uh, weak coherent pulse transceiver on, on board. So polarization is uh, slightly uh, different. The two polarization were transmitted. And also uh, real satellite is uh, moving uh, all over the world. So we did some uh, international experiment among several organizations like uh, NASA and CUNES and DLR and some uh, space agencies. So here is a real experiment I will show. So this is uh, our a one meter optical ground station in Kogane, uh, NICT. So you can see a uh, dome is now op opening. So right hand side, there is an optical bench at the NASMIS uh, focus. So many uh, optical system can be installed on this bench. And we uh, did something uh, tuning up for the tracking ability, because this is uh, just an astronomical telescope, but uh, uh, we have to track the real satellites. So here is our, our uh, external view. And uh, here is a control uh, PC for uh, telescope. So we have several ground stations. So these stations can be controlled remotely from the Tokyo station. So telescope is now moving, just about to track the real satellites. You can see dome is a little bit moving and the telescope is moving. So you can see the downlink signal in this uh, oscilloscope when uh, received. Yes, now uh, received. So we did several uh, experiment. So to confirm something, a site diversity effect. So we uh, uh, prepared something, 10 grand station. It is called the sensor stations here, all over the world, all the, over throughout Japan. So there, is, there are several sensors, a uh, whole sky, sky camera and the humidity and the temperature and the pressure sensors and so on. So these data are uh, real timely uh, measured and opened in this uh, URL uh, page. So we examined uh, some uh, satellite paths. So this was during the rainy season in uh, 2016. 
So we have three ground stations in Okinawa, Kashima, and Kogane. So when we use a one ground station, so due to a bad weather, the availability was uh, 50, less than 50%. But if we use a two or more three ground station, you can see uh, almost 100% availability from the satellite, real satellite ground. So one of the uh, three ground station can be accessed from the ground, uh, from the satellites. So this kind of uh, site diversity uh, will contribute to the standards. In this field, uh, it, it's called uh, CCSDS. For example, there are several ground stations like A, B, C, D, E, like this. So we can superimpose satellite visible paths like this. So we can choose uh, uh, one, at least one optical ground station where uh, the weather is fine, for example. After that, so uh, successful experiment was done by using a, a SOLIS terminal. This was developed by a Sony Corporation. So they used uh, our optical ground station and the uh, ISS and the optical ground station Laser communication experiment was successfully performed. This was uh, almost a mile, one of the milestones because uh, so far, so uh, Japanese government and also space agency could do this, but uh, uh, this is a private company can do this kind of things. So this is a kind of epoch making or also demonstration. Then NICET is now developing a 10 gigabps laser communication terminal between geosatellite and the ground. So this is now still a uh, uh, highest data rate uh, in the uh, space communication uh, field. So this is called engineering test satellite nine, I will show you later. So this satellite has uh, RF and optical hybrid links. So in the satellite communication area, so high throughput satellite called HDS is uh, very active because uh, satellite communication is aiming for higher capacity with lower cost per bit. For example, from a lower frequency KU band to higher K band, for example. And also, you know, a need for airborne and the ocean usage are increasing by using a, a satellite communication. And also by RF communication, more than gigabits, 10 gigabits uh, data rate cannot be possible to send. So optical communication is a solution to achieve this. So among uh, several current uh, RF uh, high throughput satellite programs like Immersat and Biasat, but we are aiming a hybrid high throughput satellite system in 2030. So for the user link, you can see uh, 100 megabps is a current target, but uh, uh, now maybe we need to uh, aim more, but uh, uh, the satellite design uh, concept is 100 megabps. So here shows the uh, uh, next generation high throughput uh, satellite communication system. So this satellite has a 100 megabps class user communication link at the KA band, and also a uh, traffic and uh, beam and frequency control can be possible by digital processing on board. So this uh, important technology will be verified in engineering test of satellite nine. So this is uh, launched, this will be launched after 2023. And also now uh, 5G, beyond 5G, uh, really important. So this satellite will be used for the test bed to use a satellite for 5G and beyond 5G purpose. And additionally, so I will explain something at JAXA's uh, laser communication program. 
So this is a data relay, optical data relay satellites. This was launched 2020. This satellite is now already in geostationary orbit. So it embark uh, this kind of geo laser terminal and the Leo laser terminal will be embarked uh, on the Earth observation satellites, uh, EROS-3. But uh, it is not yet launched. So uh, they used uh, our NICT uh, optical ground station in Okinawa. So we did some check out of the satellite and we continue to measure uh, propagation data due to atmospheric turbulence uh, continuously. So in this system, 1.8 gigabps will be achieved. And also uh, there has been some activity for uh, lunar surface uh, research. So this, this is a kind of a, a, a first trial to uh, study navigation and communication technology uh, for lunar surface activity. So JAXA selected this study uh, to uh, uh, accurate space uh, last year. So maybe uh, four or five years uh, duration, this study will uh, last. So you can see this is uh, their homepage. And also uh, we are now developing optical ground station test bed. You can see uh, one uh, two meter optical ground station telescope here. This will be the biggest solid antenna for the laser communication. So this can be used for uh, deep space communication. And also uh, the other several 40 centimeter and uh, transportable ground station are uh, also developing. So this communication system are connected via a virtual private network. So everybody user, user can use. So maybe uh, this, this test bed will be available to all the users, maybe next year. So under NRCT uh, now studying integrate network control system. So in this system, there are automatic control system and routing control system and other functions like a link monitoring and site diversity and handling and various uh, data. So data like uh, video streaming and low latency data and us uh, image observation data can be transferred uh, easily. So we are now considering this kind of uh, integrated network control system, how to build this kind of system now. So I move on to the uh, QKD issue. So do you know how satellite QKD? So I will explain a little bit. So transmission distance in optical fiber is limited by the optical loss up to 100 to 200 kilometer. So you can see right hand side. So this is a loss in the optical fiber which has a, a, around 0.2 dB per kilometer. On the other hand, here, here is a free space loss. This is a, just a diffraction effect. So um, practical QKD key rate would be maybe kilo BPS or so. So we need to keep the loss under three, 30 or 40 dB for this purpose. So when we see this 40 or 30 dB point, so optical fiber loss is drastically increased from this point. So we cannot sense a QKD key by fiber. So in the fiber, we need something, a quantum repeater, a 100 to 200 kilometer, every kilometer. But on the other hand, you can see, this is a free space loss. So this point is a thousand kilometer. So this is 
lower than the low Earth orbit. So low Earth orbit is a 500 kilometer or so. So that's why uh, we want to use the satellites. So how to share, share the key between two grand stations all over the world? So you can see, well, if we keep the quantum key alpha, for example, between this satellite and this ground station A, for example, alpha is now 1001. So after several 40 minutes later, this satellite can go at the opposite side. So this ground station B share the key, for example, beta, different one, for example, 1010, for example. And then, so we, uh, pr we produce something, a gamma. So this is a exclusive or between alpha and beta, for example. So we get easily 0011. So this gamma 0011 can be sent by uh, cell phone or internet publicly. After that, so at OGSA, so they have already alpha, but by using a, a gamma publicly uh, sent, so OGSA can know beta 1010 by using this ex exclusive or product. So what a beta? So beta is a key shared by OGSB and satellites. In the same way, OGSB will know alpha by using uh, this gamma. So that's why, so orbit already two ground stations can share the same key all over the world. So uh, R&D on satellite QKD in Japan has started uh, since uh, success, successful demonstration of SOTA. Uh, Socrates satellites. So um, a flying object and the ground station a QKD a system has been uh, developed. So now is the final year since uh, from 2018 to 2022, maybe some mission will be demonstrated in ISS. And also this is a, a Second one is uh, study and development of satellite-based QKD and uh, uh, cryptographic technology for global quantum uh, cryptographic network construction. This was awarded to uh, Sky Perfect JSAT. So this R&D uh, will be conducted 20, uh, 2021, last year to 2026. So some uh, really engineering model of the satellite will be developed. And also maybe as many audience would know, but uh, uh, China uh, performed uh, entanglement QKD by using uh, satellites. So their satellite was uh, called Missius. This was launched 2016. So here is a, a quantum bit error rate. So less than 1.1%. Uh, this was a really good, uh, good number. And also they uh, verified uh, quantum teleportation over a thousand uh, kilometer. So I don't mention in detail, but uh, there has been uh, many this kind of mission all over the world. So, in, the, in China, after that, they are now thinking mail to geo QKD mission will be launched 2026. So they want to keep one gigabit per year quantum key for this mission. And also uh, there are several new venture companies from Canada and Singapore and Australia, Australia and so on. And there are several uh, programs, Europe, uh, Netherlands, Australia, and UK, 
So this is a uh, uh, Arkit is a venture company in UK. They are now uh, developing a QKD satellite. And there is there are also from Lithuania and so on. So many activities all over the world now. So I move on the topic, uh, this activity for mega constellation programs. So, you know, Starlink has uh, launched more than 2000 operational satellites in orbit. So space laser communication will be used for the second generation of the Starlink system uh, like this. So this is a uh, uh, data rate trends of space laser communications. Abushisa is a launch year. This is a data rate. So first 10 years, so data rate increased by a factor of thousands uh, per 10 years. After that, the data rate is not so high, but uh, uh, the number of demonstrations uh, increased. Maybe from now, in, in space, uh, programs uh, only are still uh, for uh, one channel. So from now on, maybe WDM will be used in space. So data rate will be much higher than a current one, I think. But there is another stream. So data rate is not high, but the application to the micro satellites are many. Uh, there are many programs for this uh, purpose. So this is a, a example of how it goes, how it happens. So this is a satellite mass. Uh, this is a, a data rate for uh, real, mainly Earth observation satellites. So you can understand easily. So innovation vector is toward this direction because uh, lower mass, lower satellite mass, and higher data rate, it is much difficult. So uh, current uh, satellite uh, use something uh, several megabit, several up to uh, 100 megabit per sec uh, link. But by uh, using optical communication, this can be uh, enhanced more up to more gigabit per sec. This is uh, my opinion, but uh, above one gigabit per sec, so almost real-time data transmission can be possible in the Earth observation field area. So it is uh, really uh, big uh, things for this community. On the other hand, small satellites, uh, several kilogram satellites, so they still use uh, Kilo BPS RF link. But uh, by using optical communication, they can use uh, 100 mega BPS more by this technology. So, how to think this? This is an applicable area of giga BPS link. So, this is a distance, this is a data rate. So, RF system uses something a like kilobit and megabit around here, up to real, real distance. But by optical communication, we can use a gigabit per sec, even for the microsatellites. On the other hand, there is a regulation. So RF spectrum bandwidth will be limited, for example, at KA band, X band. And also, uh, Inter-satellite link needs uh, resources, but uh, I think uh, no inter-satellite micro-satellite links by RF due to the onboard uh, resource limitation from this point, for example. So here is a really advantageous area by optical communication system. So how to consider? So laser communication should be designed for gigabit links up to um, a geo geo link range here, yeah. and also inter micro satellite links and uh, really small nano satellites and the CubeSat 
uh, links for uh, this real real link range. So in NICT, we are now developing this, this small laser terminal. You can see this is a, a prototype development, just uh, two types, uh, simple transmitter and uh, full transceiver. So simple transmitter will have a three centimeter and four kilogram. And the full terminal is a nine centimeter aperture and eight kilogram. And the data rate will be a 10 gigabit and a hundred gigabit system will be on board. So this design can be used for the several various platforms like hubs and geo hubs, and the hubs and rail and drone and so on. So I categorize this kind of application link. So for laser comp uh, in mega constellations. So this axis shows a number of satellites. This shows uh, something, a uh, type, service type. So one uh, usage will be a data download from Earth observation satellites. So there are several uh, small satellite missions. And also uh, data relay purpose is important. So in the past, uh, government or JAXA and NASA uh, did many, uh, many things. But now, really small venture company, there are uh, many venture companies here for this purpose now. And also main thing is uh, broadband satellite communications, including uh, Starlink and uh, Chinese massive video and Amazon and so on. And uh, in this area, there, is, there are several all optical system, like a, a Chin, Chinese a program, data fleet, which is all optical system from airborne via satellite to ground. And the last one is a cyber security purpose by using a QKD aspect. So then, so now uh, even in Japan, so R&D of uh, space laser communication terminals for uh, rail constellations has been started since 2021. So this was uh, funded by uh, Beyond 5G R&D promotion funding in NICT, but uh, Axel Space uh, is uh, awarded. So uh, there are two kinds of items, uh, development items. One is uh, uh, laser communication terminal for micro satellites. So three or five laser communication terminal, a tiny terminal will be developed. And also the other item, so automatic operation system for rail constellation will be developed. So finally, I will describe about the future vision on space communications. So you know already, in 5G, so there are uh, three major uh, things, uh, EMBB, MMTC, URLLC. In uh, 5G, so the role of satellite communication like this, uh, also, uh, you know, extension of the supplement of the service area and the realization of the 5G scalability by high capacity data transmission in global multicast broadcast, and also broadband service for mobile platforms like a vessel and aircraft, and also extension 5G for M2M and IoT, and also uh, automatic unmanned driving. So this is a requirement for Beyond 5G issued by uh, MIC, a Ministry of Internal Affairs and Communications. In addition uh, to these three uh, measures, so for the Beyond 5G, we require low power consumption and autonomy and ultra security and uh, scalability. So this, these measures will have uh, 10 times better uh, uh, values, but uh, for the uh, satellite communication, this kind of scalability is important. 
So it is called non-terrestrial network. This will enhance uh, more uh, communication connectivity for beyond 5G. So here shows a 3D uh, seamless communication network for uh, NTN towards beyond 5G and 6G. In the future smart city, there are many promising applications, you know, such as automatic vehicle and remote education, remote medicine, telework. But uh, uh, it is very important to realize the connectivity from ocean to space, more up to moon. So in this area, integrated network control is really important. And also uh, today's topic, so laser communication will have a very important role to connect this heterogeneous network. So this kind of technology can be used for something like geo or non-GSO uh, NTN communication platforms. So in NICT, uh, we published a white paper about beyond 5G and 6G. So version two was updated uh, last March. So you can uh, take a look if you like. And also uh, there, there are some scenarios, three scenarios. One is avatar and the third one is uh, city on the moon. So recently something a cartoon and movie was uh, issued from this YouTube. So you can you can see the a story from this uh, YouTube if if you like. So I will briefly uh, introduce some uh, scenario city on the moon. So this is a vicinity of the moon around uh, 2030 uh, 2035. So construction of the city on the moon would be start. So avatar will. Uh, do this kind of construction first. So this avatar will be controlled via 6G base station on the moon and uh, something a crew from the lunar gateway and also uh, something workers from the earth will control this avatars. So broadband communication is really needed. So in this case, optical communication is will be inevitable for this kind of uh, use case in, in the future. So finally, I will uh, show some major applications for space laser communications. So as I mentioned, so this technology will be used for uh, rail constellations and also hybrid high throughput satellites, including drone hubs, and also as uh, Earth observation satellite can uh, transmit their data via data relay satellite like this. And also this technology will be used to, uh, even up to the moon as a deep space link. Thank you very much. Finally, I let me conclude as follows. So recent activity on space laser communications were introduced. So due to the difficulty of RF bandwidth allocation and the many satellites and constellations, maybe this is my opinion. So laser communications will be a promising solution to achieve the higher data, data rate such as under such a uh, environment. And the space laser communication should be designed for the following applications such as spectrum bandwidth limited applications and the resource limited applications. And also currently uh, radio regulation free usage. So uh, low role of space laser communications for NTN should be further discussed for the beyond 5G and 6G. So that's all. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much. So it's nine.
So we begin to uh, begin the Q and A session. Uh, is there any questions or comments? I have a question. Uh, my question is about the safety of the laser. So is your system is safety for human eye or something, some other uh, life like this? Yes. Um, if we want to send the broadband higher data rate, so laser power is needed. So. Uh, Usually we select uh, 1.5 or longer wavelengths. This is uh, uh, safer uh, than that for the shorter wavelengths. However, um, we sometimes we need to send the higher high power data laser to the satellite sometime. So um, there are some uh, schemes. So in the optical ground station, for example, uh, we uh, use something a uh, radar to detect the aircraft, for example. So there is something uh, shutter in the optical path. So when the radar detects something object like a uh, aircraft, this shutter can uh, stop the transmission of the laser. So there might be some uh, safety uh, functions in the ground station and. Uh, uh, the other uh, something purpose, for example. So when we don't have such a radar in the past, uh, we could see naked eye by naked eye the aircraft. So sometimes uh, we have to consider this kind of things, but uh, some automatic system would be better uh, for eye safety and uh, this kind of uh, issue. Thank you. Uh, one more related question. Uh, I belong to the National Defense Academy. So I educate the students for self-defense force. So is there any danger of being used as a weapon, <laughs> this kind of technology? Ah, uh, yes, yes. I I think it's not so difficult to yes. apply the, some kinds of weapons, laser weapons. So yes. the, I'm, I'm just wondering, the, uh, I want to uh, your, your comments on that point. Yes, uh, there, are, there are several, there were several such a weapon in United States. I, I cannot I can say exactly, but uh, they have uh, some kind of laser uh, transmitter with the uh, adaptive optic system to compensate something uh, atmospheric turbulence to destroy something uh, missiles and so on. They have. But in Japan, <laughs> as far as I know, so there, there, there is no, no such uh, development for this purpose. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions? So I would like, uh, I'd like to ask you about the uh, uh, life, uh, the similar question as uh, Dr. Hawaii. Uh, and uh, um, you have mentioned that um, uh, you are using uh, 1.5 micron laser pattern, but um, I, I just found uh, other groups with uh, uh, bigger laser. So, which is um, or the, which is more suitable for uh, such a recommendation? Yes, yes, there are several discussions in this area. So the advantage is to use a 1.5 micron. We can uh, use many uh, developed products from the fiber-based devices. But uh, uh, one group uh, in 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 Europe they are using 1.06. This is a wavelength from the YAG laser. This is really stable and high power. But uh, um, 
there are several merits each other. So there are two streams. But in the past 1990 or so, so 0.8 uh, micron also was candidate. But uh, uh, the advent of the 1.5 micron technology, I can say it was banished. So, but uh, we, can, we can choose uh, the other wavelengths if some good device would be available, I think. So, but currently two 1.5 and 1.06 are a main wavelengths for this area. And, uh, and, and one question about the coherence, coherence of the laser. Uh, how about the alignment of uh, laser and what is needed for several communication? Uh -huh. But if we, if we want to use uh, something, a uh, coherent system, so some system use a uh, DPSK, some, uh, some system use a uh, BPSK something, maybe based on my experience, maybe uh, something uh, several kilohertz or uh, laser would be used. Oh, that's a good, very good one. Yes, very, good, very, one. very good one, I think. So uh, the feasibility of WDM must be uh, must uh, uh, must must be accomplished uh, with uh, using a very narrow uh, narrow line with laser. So, uh, so, uh, so um, any other questions from the audience or uh, from the online audience? Okay, there are no questions. So uh, so. So now let's uh, close the thinking. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So it's now time to close the session. So let's thank the uh, speakers and uh, all participants again. Thank you very much.